Well, hello. Today we are building a simple town hall slash iron golem farm. No, this is not the villager trader 5000, but this should probably be the first major build of your world. Think of this farm like a wood pickaxe. You have to get the wood pickaxe so that you can get stone tools and bring your world to its next level. You have to start with something before you can get your own villager trader 5000. This is it and the villagers have their nicer trades. Look at that pumpkin trade guys. Beautiful, beautiful. So they are combined and they should be combined because you are foregoing a crap ton of iron if you do not. All right, so let's go back in time and let's build this together. Okay guys, so I hope that intro turned out well because we are in the past now and just look at this gorgeous village guys. I'm trying to build this whole farm as if I had somewhat recently started and I already have two villagers trapped in a house and so they will be the Adam and Eve of our trading hall. So this is best practice when you see a village trap villagers in their houses so that zombies won't kill them because they eventually will. And basically, we're just going to surround this house and just build up. So we'll start off with just a 13 by 13 square, just to make sure that the placement of the building is where we want it to be. And if you want to build this exact building, these are the blocks that you'll need to do it. With that square, we are now going to go straight up 15 blocks for a total height of 16. The wiki says we'll only need 13. So we're going to play it safe and go just a couple higher. From here, we'll do the same 13 by 13 square. Now we'll want to fill in the floor. We'll want to do this with either a slab or glass. I would not use a wood slab and I'll show you why in a second. First we'll fill in from the edge three blocks. This is why I would not use wood. If for whatever reason we need to remove one of these villagers, if we attack the villager, we will fall out of favor with the village and will actually receive worse trades. So they need to be removed with something like lava. This way the village thinks that they died of natural causes, even though we may have been the natural cause. So anyway, wood walls are probably fine, but I draw the line at wood floors. So now we're going to fill up this ring of glass. This will be the chute that the golems will fall down. We'll go up two more blocks on the glass and then two more on the wood. If this were my survival world, I would actually get the villagers now so that we can get the ball rolling on breeding and this is all we'll need to start. So now we will bring them up and a simple water tower will do the trick. Now we'll want all of these to be source blocks, so we'll do the kelp trick and make it that way. Otherwise, just using normal buckets is totally fine. Now to bring them up from the house, we'll start by making the border around the property. And we'll also make some temporary dirt pathways to help guide the villagers in. Now we'll just drop some water and pretty painlessly bring them up. Don't worry, it's like 15 blocks. No, they're not going to drown. 
And by the way, zombies won't go up this either. So they are up, and I put the gate over the water just so they don't hang out in it. And I put it in their workstations as well. So we'll need to keep a couple things in mind for villager reproduction. That's why the beds are arranged the way they are. One, the villagers need to have slept to reproduce. Two, they need several open blocks above the bed clear so that the babies can jump on them. Three, they need to be able to find their workstation. And four, they all can't be in a line because they need two block side access on each bed. So even though they can and will still sleep in their beds if they're just all lined up, uh, they still won't breed because they need the two blocks. And honestly, that's probably the most realistic part of this whole thing, is reproduction is not happening if your twin bed is awkwardly shoved up against the wall like it was in high school. So daylight cycle is currently off, and I'm quickly going to turn it back on and off again, and that will count as them sleeping. Now I'm just going to feed them some bread. We're not wasting any iron golems right now because they'll need at least five to start spawning by trading. You might think three, but that's if we're spawning them through villager panic. We'll need five to start spawning them through trade. So now that that's in motion, we're just going to keep going up. We'll do three more on the wood and two more on the glass. Now we'll fill in the roof and we'll use half slabs again, but we'll put them at the top of the block this time instead of the bottom so that spawning can take place. Don't cheap out and make the roof lower because you will not get villagers to reproduce if the kiddos can't jump on the bed. We'll also do an oak slab on the parapet so the golems can only spawn on the inside. And we'll need gates so the water doesn't go down the golem chute. We'll now put in water and we'll do so first by putting temporary blocks in the corner. And make sure that you don't put water down on the half slab instead of the parapet so that it doesn't just go down, and instead click on the wood every time you place it. Now we'll fill in over the dirt blocks, and we actually do have to do it like this or the water diagonals will not work correctly. And we'll just want to keep the villager reproduction going during this. Okay, so now while that's going on, we can demo the house. We'll slab the floor down and we'll go in three, and then the layer after that will be the start of the glass. Glass is in place and we'll now make the killing area. So we could use campfires but we only want to use one hopper since this is the start of the world and those things are expensive man. They're like an iron block plus a chest and that was before inflation. So now we'll use gates, signs would work just as well, and we'll put lava above and water below. Perfect. So now we can keep breeding and even trading if we want and the golems will be taken care of. We'll probably farm while this is finishing up and also do the other facades. So I've finished the other facades, done some trading and we even have started getting the golems. I basically just stuck with the materials that a normal village uses with a bit of a modern twist. 
Not too much so it doesn't totally look out of place in the village. The facade materials can be really whatever you want. Here on a creative world, I copied and pasted what I did on a server earlier this year. This is just three of that same building next to each other, and I staggered them by one block and went just a story higher on the left just for aesthetics. Then each building I put similar villagers together. So this is just a bit of more inspiration for you guys. I do want to point out that for the windows, you need to make sure that none of the top blocks are spawnable blocks. So I used a variety of blocks, but they all had one thing in common. Mobs and golems can't spawn on them. If you do want to use a block that they can spawn on, then put string on the top of that block. Back to our world, it is time to start the zombification process. So this is a temporary staircase that I put string on just to ensure the golems won't spawn while we do this. So we'll want to temporarily modify what's going on inside of here. Uh, so the first thing is we have a block and a half drop so nothing in can escape. They can come in but they can't leave. And then uh, next is these temporary walls we put up so the villagers can't just run in a circle. They'll have to get captured by the zombie. Then finally these beds were temporarily removed and so we just have this open corner now. And now most importantly we have a block here and then a gap and then a block here. So this is very important. We'll jump from one pillar to the other and that way we can stand here and the zombie will not be able to get us and we will be able to get to this spot quickly without the zombie being able to follow us. Alright, so now let's get a zombie. So this part is actually not as intimidating as it might seem. Zombies can sense you from a lot further than other mobs, so that will make things easy. So we'll just want to clear out the other mobs that might disturb us while we do this. Uh, so we'll camp here until a close one shows up. Alright, why is this not working? Okay, so I was in creative still. I promise, I play this game a lot. We'll get him, see I see him tracking us now, and actually another one as well, and so we'll have to block that off as soon as he gets in. Okay, so now we'll box ourselves in and we'll listen for the zombies to kill the other ones. Uh, so the reason why we box ourselves in is so that the zombie, all the zombies are not focused on us. So it, it, when I punch this out, they'll start to come back to me and we don't want that. We want, first we want them to zombify all the other ones before that happens. Okay, so now they're all here, they're all looking at me, none of them can get to me, uh, but they're all really close to me. And I don't need to kill the real zombie, but I think I can get him. Okay, and now we'll start the curing. So if you're playing single player, it's over. You're good. Press E, go get a snack. You did it. You won. As the villagers turn back to zombies, they'll go about and do their own thing, and the zombies that are still zombies will stay focused on me. If you are in realms, or if you are in a situation that will kick you out if you don't move, then you are not in the clear. If you log out, this whole thing goes to crap. The zombies will despawn, the villagers will be gone, your apples will be wasted, and your girlfriend will dump you. So on realms, you need to shimmy back and forth with maximum stress until they are all cured. Alright, so now we have the awesome trades. Look at that, so good. And we can turn this place back to the way that we found it. So now that we're all ready to do all the trades, I'm going to quick show you guys how to make a trash can if you didn't know. So when you're trading, you're going to get a lot of junk that you don't really want, uh, that you're doing really just to unlock the future better trades. And so this will dispose of that. So basically we'll just dig down three by three, 
just like this. And then we'll use a dropper, a comparator, a repeater, and then some redstone to connect it all. And then this will spit out whatever we put into it. I like to just let them despawn instead of using lava, just in case you misclick and put your favorite item in it and then it gets destroyed. So we'll just patch this whole thing up. And we'll use a bucket and that'll kind of look like a trash can. And then there we go. Uh, I'll put string in just to show you how it works. You shouldn't do that. You should trade it with a fisherman. But you can hear the clicks and uh, they're being dropped. Okay, so for the spoils, I'm going to look at what I did when I made this on my server. Okay, this is it. Yeah, keep this in mind. This is what you're missing out on if you if you do these as two different builds. You need to combine them. Uh, at least your first one should be combined because you need all that iron early on. Alright, if you learned something today, please leave a like. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.